Dark Crisis on Infinite Earths is the end of everything, and some of the greatest heroes have died in this fight. Today we're going to be covering some of the tie-in books to the overall Dark Crisis on Infinite Earths event, Flash's continuation, and what's going on with Young Justice. You have found yourself at the Comic Story and Channel. I create audio dramas of comic books, letting you know what is going on in the world of comics, while leaving out enough to give you something to collect. If you do want to start a collection, I recommend one of our sponsors, Shortboxed. It's an app that'll help you start your collection, and the link is down below to let you get into a contest to win a book. Now, when we last left off with Flash, Wally has been in the search for Barry Allen, who went missing after helping out the Justice League incarnate. Wally sent himself and the other members of the Flash family through different points in time, converging on Barry's unique imprint in the Speed Force, hoping to find out where he vanished to. But as they narrow it down to only a handful of options, everything that they learn about the berry that they just found makes them realize that maybe he's not the one they're looking for. Or is he? There's a rumble in the wastelands as a pack of apocalyptic stylized cars roar down the barren lands. The head of the group is this world's Barry Allen, fighting through his last chance to save the world. Barry bites the pin on a grenade, tossing it out his window to get one of the cyclists off him. And Jesse and Max realize that they don't have as much time as they'd like to stop this before everyone gets hurt. They go into different directions to take down the motorists, tossing them all from their cars and bikes when Barry Allen suddenly stops getting out of his car. He walks to the back of it, opening up a trunk, stating that Tara Mongus thinks that she's going to stop him. He's come too far and he won't stop now. Boom. He spins back, firing a rocket into the oncoming semi-truck. But Max Mercury speeds through, pointing it in another direction to miss the truck. Barry asks, what in the waste? And that's when the semi stops and Jesse jumps out. Hey, Jesse Quick here. This is Max Mercury. We're looking for our friend, Barry Allen. This world's Barry Allen tells them that he is Barry Allen. And he has never seen anyone that looks like them before. Jesse and Max sigh. We're on the wrong earth again. And Barry tells them that wherever they come from, they should probably head back. Quick. Jesse asks why, and Barry looks back. That's why. Terra Mungus races in on her monster truck, shouting, You have something that belongs to Terra Mungus, Flash! She fires her cannon, and Max quickly grabs Barry, moving him out of the way before his car explodes. Jess then says that she really hopes the others are having better luck. But with the others... Jai and I Ray, the children of Wally West, have decided that it would be fun to help look for Barry by sneaking into the portal when everyone was leaving. However, in their case, they've been split from everyone, and they have found themselves in a Gotham-style city frantically trying to just get home. But before they could figure out Mr. Terrific's watch, a figure appears. What are you doing in my city? I Ray says that they're looking for their uncle, and Jai tells her to just shut up and run! Iray grabs Jai and takes off with the figure stepping out. Speed powers? Henchmen for knives, no doubt. He can make as many as he wants, but I can still run them out of the city. Because no one can stop the Night Flash! The caped Barry Allen of this world rockets towards the two kids, but as he tries to grab them, Jai manages to punch him back, giving them some time to breathe. Iray checks her pockets, quickly realizing that during their escape, she may have dropped the watch, which is the only way for them to get home. At that moment, another shadowy figure pokes out of an alleyway, telling them to come this way. They don't have much time. The two follow the figure for a few seconds before Barry Allen arrives. Where are they? You can't hide forever in my city. Do you hear me? My city! But over with Wally West and Wallace West, the two spot this world's Barry Allen. And Wally notices something is a little off about this one. This world still has Wally as Kid Flash, but the Barry that's down there looks older, like he's the proper Barry. After the current world Flash's take down Captain Cold, Wally tells Wallace that they should split up. He'll take on Barry. Wallace tells him, all right, I got it. I'll tell this Kid Flash. But as Barry runs back home, getting ready, he begins to enjoy his perfect life. That's when he stops, and he realizes that he is now in front of Eobard Thawne. Reverse Flash, which is not actually Reverse Flash, but it's who Wally West appears to be to this world's Barry Allen. Barry looks at him, you! And Wally asks, uh, why are you looking at me like you're gonna punch my head off? A second later, Barry knocks Wally into a wall, unleashing a barrage of punches, with Wally just yelling, wait, hey, stop! 
He vibrates through the wall to get away, but Barry vibrates chasing him. You can't get away from me like that. I invented this trick. But on the other side of the wall, Wally hits him with a cyclone, telling him, I'm sorry about this. I didn't come to fight. I just want to talk. But Barry grabs bits of the debris, throwing them back. This stops here, Thawne. Wally runs forward, grabbing him, yelling, No, it's me, Wally! But Barry then sees multiple figures. Wally? No, no, it's another of Thawne's tricks. I'm not falling for it. I'm done letting you torture me. You're never going to hurt my family again. Barry begins to beat Wally down. But over with Wallace, he sneaks into this world's Wally West home. Or at least so he thought. As Wallace watches Kid Flash walk into the house, suddenly he appears behind him. Hey, we've been waiting for you. Wallace is confused. Wait, what happened to my Flash suit? Wally asks, Flash suit? Everyone knows you're retired. Besides, who needs the Flash when Burst has the Western Hemisphere on lockdown? Wallace then asks, Burst, what are, uh, what, uh... But as Wallace looks down, he sees that his costume has changed from his Kid Flash costume to a black and silver costume. And he asks, where did this come from? What's going on? Wally pulls him inside. You're just in time for dinner. That's what's going on. Wallace gets ready to tap on his watch to return home, just declaring that he doesn't understand any of this and he's feeling kind of, but Wally stops him. Look, come on in, Ace. Everyone's waiting for you. Wallace follows and immediately sits down at the dinner table with the former Flashes and current teammates telling them, I'm starting to remember now. This is right, exactly how it's supposed to be. Where I belong, I'm finally home. But we'll be checking back in on Wally and Wallace West soon. But now it's time to jump over to Dark Crisis on Infinite Earths, Young Justice, issue number two. After being sent to what seemed like an alternate reality, Tim, Bart, and Connor managed to meet up at their old hideout at Happy Harbor. The only problem is that Cassie wasn't there. The three then went out to stop the mighty endowed, but the three boys realized that this could be quite the challenge given the villain's uh, stature. But before things could go from bad to worse, Cassie of this timeline shows up to save the three of them and join the battle. As the four of them band together, Tim thinks to himself that this is just like old times. The original Young Justice back together. Cassie tells him, isn't this great? I'm really glad you all finally showed up. I can't wait to show you around. But before Cassie could finish her sentence, the mighty endowed lands a cheap shot and Cassie tells them all to hang on. She's going to take care of this first. Cassie throws herself back into the fight. Then Bart watches. I am loving the view. And then the others all turn and stare at him. Wait, what? Did I just say that? I've never said anything like that before. Did I? We need to figure out what's going on. Tim tells them that they will figure it out. They always do, and who knows? They might actually be able to have fun for a change. The four easily take down the Mighty Endowed, and Tim says, All right, now that that's over with, time to figure out what we're doing here. Bart asks if anyone is actually in trouble here. The Mighty Endowed looked like she was just waiting for them. Where are they supposed to take her? Tim says, good point. They probably should question her, but Cassie says that she has a better idea. A few seconds later, they're all racing down the valley on the super cycle, with Bart folding his arms. Great, I still have nightmares about this thing. But even though things seem normal, Tim thinks that things are a bit off. And Cassie looks a lot more carefree, less angry than she's been in years. At that moment, Oracle radios in that their help is needed over in Metropolis to take down the villain known as Tora. Tim asks if they should call in some backup. They just got out of a fight. What about John, Damien, or even Wallace? Cassie tells them that it's just Tora and she can handle that. Besides, she's never heard of any of those names that they just mentioned. As the four of them reach Tora, Connor and Bart get to work taking her down with Cassie asking Tim what's the matter. Don't you want to get in on the fun? He tells her that it's not that, it's just things seem strange around here. Are they in an alternate dimension? Why are they fighting their old villains? Cassie says that she isn't sure herself and she doesn't have the answers, but she does know who does. Meanwhile, back in the original dimension, the actual real Cassie is continuing to search for answers as to where her friends went missing to with hopes of getting their former teammate Arrowette to join her. Later on the archery field, Cassie says, see, I miss being a superhero. And Sissy tells her no, because college is expensive and archery can get her loads of financial aid. Cassie snatches an arrow, firing it, asking if she's more worried about college than her oldest friends. And Sissy says that she's more worried about a world without the Justice League than one without Connor, Bart, and Tim. Besides, she doesn't have the same shiny memories that Cassie might have. She only remembers fighting people the Justice League didn't understand, like women and people from other countries and folks who were doing their best. Cassie grabs another arrow, telling her, look, we've all made mistakes. 
With the Justice League gone, the world needs all the help that it can get. It needs Tim, Bart, and Connor. Sissy then says that she does know that she only comes around when there's something wrong with the boys, right? Cassie tells her it isn't true, but Sissy presses her, telling her that she stopped being a hero because of the toxicity. Her life revolved around those three boys. But who is she without them? She won't let her life be decided by three privileged idiots who had the world handed to them on a platter. Sissy sighs. I will help this time, but this is the last thing that I ever do for Young Justice. Cassie reaches for her hand, telling her she never knew. As Sissy snaps back, it's too late for you to fix it. Back with the boys, the Cassie of the other dimension brings them to the Watchtower to meet the Justice League, who in this dimension are still alive. As the ship hatch opens, Flash grabs a Bart. Man, am I happy to see you! Bart asks, really? Didn't you, like, not like me? Superman tells Connor that they need to catch up, come with him. And as they leave, Connor sees Earth from afar, and Superman says that it's beautiful, isn't it? When you see it from here, you realize how fragile the world is. That is why we need you to protect it, Connor. Connor asks, wait, isn't that John's job? Superman hands Cassie a cape, telling him that the world will need Connor. It always has. This world deserves you, Connor. Bart has a similar interaction with the Flash. As Wally takes off his mask, Cassie tells him that they need him to be the next Flash. And the same for Tim. However, when presented with the cowl, Tim becomes skeptical. Cassie tells him that he can be what he always wanted to be. To become Batman. She's sure that Spoiler would love to see him as Batman. Tim says, I'm not with Stephanie. I'm dating Bernard. And Batman says, you will date Stephanie. Stephanie is your destiny. Once you're out of this phase. Tim is flabbergasted that Batman would state that, especially considering the Batman that Tim knows was supportive of his decisions. So a short while later, the three meet for lunch to discuss their findings. And Tim and Bart are in agreement that they need to figure this out and leave. But Connor asks if they really want to go back. Tim and Bart look at each other and Bart says that this isn't even their place. It has their past wrong. It's kind of also going out of its way to be sexist, racist, and homophobic. This place is for immature boys. It's not for us. Connor then asks, what if this is the world that they do belong in though? Bart looks at Tim telling him that he did say those words out loud, right? Everyone can hear Connor. Connor asks again, what if this is the real world? What if it's our memories that are fake? What if this is where we're meant to be? It's better for us here. If it's real, I never died. But soon the table realizes something. Cassie is nowhere to be found. They hurry back out and make for Happy Harbor to see if maybe Cassie ended up there. And while they all discuss about how Cassie was trying to get them to replace their mentors, there's a rumble on the ground. The super cycle suddenly ramps off a mound crashing, and as the boys get up, the ground begins to split open. Tim looks around. Hey guys, we might have a bigger problem here because we got zombies! Bart gets ready to run, but can't get any speed. Connor goes to use his heat vision, but it's having no effect. He then grabs everyone to fly away when the water begins to rise. Everything that seemingly could go wrong is all of a sudden happening at once. As they cross the lake, they see the shadows at the cave's entrance, and as they get closer, they all suddenly freeze. Standing over Cassie's body is a much older, much fatter boomerang, telling them, It's good to see you, boys! And old man Lex asks, Did you miss us? And old man Deathstroke asks, We certainly missed you. And that is the continued storylines of Flash in Dark Crisis and Young Justice in Dark Crisis. Now make sure you subscribe as next Thursday we're going to be bringing you Worlds Without the Justice League and Dark Crisis issue number three. To check back every Thursday to continue the Dark Crisis storyline. Thank you guys so much and we'll see you next time right here.